there. Hi, Marissa. You did. Sorry, I, it just kept spinning and spinning and spinning, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so, how's it going? It's going. Do you all have slides, I'm assuming, or no? I do, yep. Are you ready for me to share my screen? Well, let me make sure. Yeah, I think go ahead and share your screen. Okay. And I want to make sure. Okay. I just want to make sure that we don't have any raised hands. I want to turn that off. But I think we're good. Okay. Do we have both a Q&A and a chat box tonight, or is it just a Q&A feature? Yeah, no. It's just it like it's Q and A. Just Q and A. So all attendees will will um, see you, but you will not have. They will not be able to talk. They're all on okay. mute. Um, and actually, I need to share. Hang on, I need to share the beginning slides before I think before you do. Okay, I can stop sharing my screen. Sorry about that. That's okay. I need to figure out how to share the. Nope, that's not it. Uh, well, hmm. I'm struggling getting to the share. Huh. There were screens that I was supposed to be able to share that just welcomes the participants and the broadcast. Let me see. Can you tell this is my first one doing this? Um, <laughs> That's okay. Go to slides, which I don't actually see. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, do you have just the green arrow share screen yeah. button at the bottom? Yep. That's what I just click and then I just click whatever is open that I prefer to share. I don't know if it works differently on your end. Advanced sharing options, yes, but it doesn't give me the Moacx stuff to share. <laughs> Do you have two screens or is it pulled up on one screen? Well, no, I've got my other screen, but when I go to share that, it wants a whole new link and everything. Oh, weird. Yeah. And I don't want to keep folks waiting, so. But I also, I'm also running into the fact that by participants, I, they automatically come in at 7 o'clock. So if we don't okay. have it, I'm just going to do the welcome and, and turn it over to you. And then I'm going to turn my video off and, okay. and mute on, I'll mute. And then you can turn your screen on. We'll just okay. do it that way. Yeah, sounds good. I think they'll come in at seven, so. Okay, sounds great. I will unmute whenever you allow me to. Okay. I'll introduce you. I'll just say it for the University okay. of Iowa. Okay. Welcome to the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Exploration for all Missouri high school students. If you need to ask questions, there is a Q&A, but your video and mute are both, your video is off and your mute is on. We encourage you to sign up for more sessions as they will continue for the next uh, week or so. And you can do that at www.moacac.org. There are also many recordings available for you to learn about more and more colleges. This evening's presentation will be brought to you by the University of Iowa and will go through until 7.45 p.m. And now I will send it over to the University of Iowa. 
All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jess Klein. I am one of the admission counselors at the University of Iowa Office of Admissions. I am just going to get my presentation set up here. So tonight we will chat through, first and foremost, the application process and all of the steps that that entails, and then follow that up with some information on what it's like to be a student at the University of Iowa. I am actually not the admission counselor that covers Missouri. We have two different admission counselors that cover Missouri as a state. So Marissa Wietrich covers the western side of Missouri and John Cundell covers the eastern side of Missouri. So if you need their contact info information, Marissa is handling our Q&A feature tonight and she would be happy to provide either her email or John's email depending on which counselor covers your half of the state. As we kind of have been told already, there is a Q&A feature and so I would encourage all of you to ask any questions that I may not answer in my presentation in that Q&A and Marissa will be answering those behind the scenes and so that is how you can kind of get some more detailed information and stuff that we may not cover during this presentation. So starting off we will start off with a bird's eye view of the University of Iowa. So normally when students come to Iowa, they mention how important their campus visit is to the experience. And right now we unfortunately cannot welcome you in person. So we'll do a pretty thorough explanation of what you see here on this photo. The first thing that I point out to all of our campus visitors is that the Iowa River is our organization line. So about a third of the way down the screen, you will see that the Iowa River runs horizontally across the photo here. That separates our campus into the east side of campus and the west side of campus. As an undergraduate student, you're going to spend about 90 to 100% of your time over here on the east side of campus. That's where all of our undergraduate academics are primarily housed. So the first few buildings that you'll probably notice are these five buildings in the center of the screen here with the gold domed building in the center. That is our old Capitol building and that was the original capital of the state of Iowa and that is where the University of Iowa actually started from. So that is now the heart and soul of our undergraduate side of campus. The four buildings that surround that make up the remainder of the Pentacrest buildings. And in those five buildings, that's where you'll find a majority of our general education coursework. Surrounding that Pentacrest area, you'll also have the College of Engineering and the main library off to the left of your screen. And down here towards the river, you'll see the English Philosophy Building, the Becker um, Journalism Building and Communications Building, the Iowa Memorial Union, and then heading up the hill here, you'll also find Calvin Hall, which is primarily offices, and the Papa John Business Building across the street. The one other building I wanna point out kind of tucked in here is our chemistry building. And then you can see just the corner of what would be the east side neighborhood of residence halls. Across the river, you will not be over there a whole lot for courses depending on what your major is. We do have the College of Nursing and College of Public Health easily accessible right across the river, as well as the Arts and Theater campus. There's also a west side neighborhood over here of some residence hall buildings for um, any students, freshmen through seniors. But beyond that thin layer right across the river, you'll find Kinnick Stadium and Carver Hawkeye Arena, where you'll really only be over there for sporting events, the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, which is one of the largest and best teaching hospitals in the nation. So you may be over there for volunteering or job shadowing, and then the medical campus. Again, if you're involved in research, you may be over there, but otherwise, the majority of your time as an undergraduate is spent on this side, and maybe a thin layer right across the river that's accessible via our CAM bus system or via these little footbridges that do run across the river. So that is our actual campus. And then if you were to cross the street, you are right in downtown Iowa City. So one of the questions that I get asked most frequently as an admission counselor is what is something that sets the University of Iowa apart from other institutions? And I always say that it's the fact that we are nestled right into the Iowa City community. So when you come to the University of Iowa, you are not just a student here on campus, you are also automatically a member of that Iowa City community too. Too. So right across the street, we call this area our ped mall or our pedestrian mall because there's a little less vehicle traffic and a lot more foot traffic. 
There's about 200 small businesses in that area, about 70 of which are owned by alums of the university. So people are staying around post-graduation and investing back in that Iowa City community. In this area, you're going to find everything from coffee shops and restaurants, boutiques, the Iowa City Public Library, movie theaters and bowling alleys. But that also translates into opportunities for you to get involved off campus, whether that's volunteering at an event downtown or just heading downtown and taking part in one of the festivals that happens every weekend over the summer or taking part in one of those free concerts on Friday evenings during the summer as well. So there's always something going on downtown and then you can walk just a block or two and be right back on campus. So I personally think that when you do have a chance to visit campus, I encourage each and every one of you and your families to get a feel for that downtown area because you are going to be in that area and you are going to be a citizen of the Iowa City community if you do choose to attend the University of Iowa as well. Taking a look more specifically at the students that attend the University of Iowa, last year we had 31,656 enrolled students between undergraduate and graduate students. So if you were to take that graduate population out of there, you'd have approximately 24,000 undergraduates. If we look specifically at last year's incoming class, we had 4,986 first year students. On any given year, we're looking somewhere between 4,800 and 5,000 students in any class and we have students coming from the state of Iowa but also from states outside of Iowa and internationally as well. On the right side of your screen you should see our academic profile for last year's incoming class. This was about a 3.76 average high school GPA for that class on a scale of 4.0 and they were sitting in that middle 50% range for their ACT and SAT scores. We love to talk about that because they were our highest academically achieving class ever until this past year's class came in, but I don't like to place a lot of emphasis on that because that is not our admission criteria. So we'll talk more specifically about that in just a moment. I do want to show off where our students are coming from in terms of our top 10 states. So we have about 58% of our incoming students coming from the state of Iowa last year, which makes sense because we are a state institution, but we also have students coming from all over the Midwest as well as California and Texas. And you'll notice that Missouri is included in our top 10 states as well. And so for example, just to give you a little bit of a benchmark, we're about four hours away from St. Louis and about four four and a half hours away from Kansas City, just so you can pinpoint exactly where Iowa City is and how far that is away from home for you, if you can base yourself off of those landmarks. Turning it over now to our application process. As I mentioned, we do not have a GPA and ACT score specifically um, for our general admission process. Some of our direct admission processes are different. We'll chat about that in just a moment. If you are looking to apply to the University of Iowa, this year is a little bit different when it comes to admission. The first thing that I will state is that the RAI formula that you see is best if you are applying with a test score or you are a junior or younger planning for a future admission. So our RAI formula is our typical process that stands for Regent Admission Index and that is a process that is determined by the State Board of Regents that governs our institution as well as Iowa State University and the University of Northern Iowa. So what this formula entails is an ACT or SAT composite score. We do not super score and we take the highest score that you submit to us. The second component is your cumulative high school GPA. So if you attend a high school that does provide a weighted and an unweighted GPA, whichever is higher is the GPA that you should submit. Finally, the last component of this RAI formula is number of years of high school core courses. So this is in five key areas, math, science, social studies, English, and world language. So for example, if you took four years of math and four years of English and so on, that is your total number of years of high school core courses. What we then come up with is your RAI score. And so as a non-resident student, we are looking for a minimum score of 255 to be admitted to the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. 
Certain programs on campus will have specific criteria for direct admission to their programs. So for example, the College of Business, nursing, engineering, education, and public health all have direct admission criteria as well. All of those programs also have standard admission criteria, which means that if you do not get in directly from high school during their, through the direct admission pathway, you can get in through standard admission. Backing up just a little bit, if you are a senior applying this year, we are now test flexible due to the fact that it is pretty hard to take a test, either the ACT or the SAT, due to cancellations caused by the coronavirus outbreak. So if you are applying without a test score, you move through a similar process and we are still going to ask you to submit your cumulative high school GPA and your core courses, but we are also going to ask for a personal statement and a transcript from your high school as well. And we will accept either an official or an unofficial transcript, whichever you do prefer to submit. Again, that is only if you are applying for fall of 2021 without a test score. Otherwise, you would follow the RAI formula as usual. And this year for direct admission to colleges as well, that kind of follows the same holistic review process. A couple of other notes on our application process. I get asked quite frequently how world language plays into our requirements for admission and graduation. Most of our programs publish that they require two years of a world language in order to be admitted to the university, but many of our programs actually require fourth level proficiency or four years, for example, in high school to graduate from their program. So I always recommend students take as much world language in high school as possible, and if possible, complete through your fourth year, for example, Spanish four or French four, and then you have met that graduation requirement by the time you come to the University of Iowa. If you haven't, no worries. You can always finish out that requirement during your time as a student. I also like to emphasize that it is important to apply early in the process, and we have an application on the Common App, the Coalition App, as well as the University of Iowa website. So at the end of this presentation, we will have the URL posted to our main website, and you can find that application there. The application does cost $40 to complete, and we are rolling admission. So technically, the deadline to apply for the fall of 2021 is May 1st. However, I highly recommend applying early in your senior year, but for sure before March 1st, so that you are eligible for scholarships through our merit scholarship process. I'm sure you probably have a few questions about the application process or there was perhaps something I did not cover. Now is a great time to put any questions that you may have in the Q&A feature so that Marissa can answer those on her end. Another one of the reasons I always emphasize applying early is because there are a couple of next steps to the admission process. One of those next steps is finding your home here on our university's campus. So we do not require any of our incoming first years to live in the residence halls, but about 95% of our incoming class does choose to live in our residence halls. And we highly recommend it as a key part of your experience here at Iowa. So if you are thinking of living in one of our 10 residence halls on campus, there is a housing application that will be available to you in early January. Completing this application and submitting it costs $75, which is non-refundable, but is also non-committal. So if the University of Iowa is maybe a top two or top three institution for you and you feel comfortable putting down $75, I would recommend completing the housing application as soon as you can because that does hold your place in line to select your room in June. So the sooner you fill it out in January or early February, the closer to the top of the list you will typically be. This housing application is going to be comprised of a couple of different components. The first of which we're going to ask you to explore and personalize your options when it comes to the community that you want to live with. And the second component is choosing the roommate that you'd like to share your space with. Going back to that community aspect, we have typically on any given year about 13 to 14 living learning communities or what we call LLCs. These living learning communities are based on a personal interest or an identity or something that you are studying. 
So for example, there is an entire LLC for students that are interested in creative writing or nonfiction writing. There's an entire LLC for students that are studying business. And there's an entire LLC for students that identify as a member of the LGBTQ community. So there are plenty of different options for you to choose from, but you do not have to choose a living learning community. You can also choose to live in new student housing, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. That is where everyone on your floor may have a different major and different interests, but the one thing that ties you all together is that you are all excited to be Hawkeyes. After you choose that community option, you will also get to choose a roommate. So if you already know somebody that is going to the University of Iowa at the same time you are, you can list them as your roommate so long as they do the same to you. You can also find a roommate maybe perhaps via our Facebook page like many other students do, or you can choose the random option, which is actually the most popular option for students going through this process. However, many students kind of want to land in the middle of that. So there is a survey as part of this housing application that will ask you questions on what type of um, person you are when it comes to cleanliness, temperature of the room, the time that you prefer to go to bed, your studying habits, etc. Then housing will provide the name and contact information for students that match your preferences as well. So they may say that you match with someone 94% and that may be a good person to reach out to and have a conversation with about being roommates for the following year. Finally, our deadline to accept admission is May 3rd of 2021. If you choose to accept admission on May 3rd, that is also letting housing know that you will be claiming that space in the residence hall room. And so sometime towards the end of May or early June, they will reach out to you with a date and time to log into their online system and you and your roommate will be able to choose the exact room and the exact building that you would prefer. Our housing website has plenty of information on all of our living learning communities, the roommate search process, and there are also interactive 360 degree views of all of our rooms, as well as some pre-recorded video tours of all of our residence halls as well. So I encourage you to check that out and get a feel for what it may be like to find your home on our campus. One of the next steps in the process aside from housing is also determining the financial fit of the University of Iowa. And this looks different for every single family that we work with on any given year. So the first thing that I always recommend every single family do is file the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA. The FAFSA will take a look at your family's income and determine if you are eligible for any federal aid or institutional aid based on your expected family contribution. This FAFSA opens on October 1st every single year and you do need to file it annually. Our priority deadline is December 1st. So I encourage anybody that is filing this application to file between October 1 and December 1. The second portion of this financial aid process are merit-based scholarships. You may have heard me mention previously that March 1st is your deadline to apply if you would like to be considered for merit-based scholarships, and that is the deadline that I would like you to consider getting your application in by. Once you apply to the University of Iowa, we take a look automatically at your GPA and your standardized test information and then determine if you are eligible for any merit-based scholarships from there. I also highly encourage you to consider looking at local scholarships in your area and chatting with your guidance counselor at your high school as to whether or not there is a compiled list previously made of any opportunities in your local area that you could seek out during your senior year. But I also encourage you to apply early so you could take advantage of the Iowa scholarship portal, which is where we house all of our aid external from our office. So think scholarships from other departments or colleges on campus. Finally, I encourage every student to kind of stick with us through the process until at least mid-February. The middle of February is when we typically release our financial aid package, and that is when you know a little bit more about your total cost of attendance after any aid that you may receive. Often that really helps students make the decision as to whether or not Iowa is a good financial fit for them or not. Finally, I will recommend reaching out to our office if you have questions on scholarships or the overall financial aid process. And if you have specific questions about the FAFSA or loans or grants, the Office of Student Financial Aid on our campus is a great resource for you to connect with. 
Changing gears here, we are going to look more specifically at what it is like to be a Hawkeye on our campus. So I always like to brag that we are the number 34 best public institution in the nation, according to US News and World Report, and that is out of over 630 public institutions. So if you do the math on that one, we are sitting in about the top 5% nationwide of schools um, public schools in the United States. Part of the reason for that is that we have a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. So for every 15 students, we have one faculty member here to help make sure that you are achieving your educational goals. And we have many resources outside of our faculty members as well. So what this means is that first and foremost, you're going to get to know your faculty members, whether it is a professor or a teaching assistant, you are going to have contact with those people. And part of the reason for that is because of office hours, but also because of small class sizes. Office hours are a time when teaching assistants and professors set aside anywhere from three to five or six hours per week to sit in their office and do nothing but help students. So that is your time to go to your professor or to your teaching assistant and ask a question that may be on your mind after the previous lecture or class session, or just get to know them and say hello. Often that's also a really great opportunity to connect with somebody in your field or ask about any research opportunities or opportunities to get more involved in something you are interested in. So I highly recommend office hours, but aside from office hours, you are also going to have access to over 20 different tutorial labs on campus, everything from the math lab, the chemistry lab, we have a, a writing centers in many of our buildings and we also have a lab that you can take your speeches to so if you have to give a speech for class you have an opportunity there to brush that up, brush up on that before you head to that class we also have over 200 areas of study this includes majors minors and certificates so everything that you could potentially imagine adding into your area of study, we will find a way for you to be able to study that and build that into your degree plan. So for example, many students will pick a major and a minor or a major minor and a certificate and make a combination of those and put that into their four year plan at the University of Iowa. Finally, I want to touch a little bit on class size. I have a lot of students and a lot of families that are a little bit concerned about a larger institution and all of our classes looking like what you see on the screen here. This is a great example of a lecture course. And depending on what you are studying, you will probably have a couple larger courses like this. So this is an example of where you would come to class typically Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you would get the content from the professor. You would take notes and then you would study up on that material and go to a separate discussion style class for the same content where you would not learn anything new, but you would go over discussion questions and work in smaller groups. Typically discussion style classes are anywhere between 20 and 30 students and those are taught by a teaching assistant that also attends the lecture. Most of our classes are not this large, however, over 80% of our courses are less than 30 students. So in addition to getting to know your faculty members, you are also going to have ample opportunities to get to know your peers as well. I'm a strong advocate for learning not stopping after you, leaving, after you leave the classroom, and I think that I've become a stronger advocate for that now that I work for the University of Iowa post-graduation. So we have many opportunities to take part in experiential learning, two of the most prominent being studying abroad and researching here on campus. We are a tier one research institute. That means every single area of study offers an opportunity to conduct research and most of our professors on campus are involved in research in some way. So if you are just like the one in three undergraduates that are interested in conducting research during your time at Iowa, you can chat with one of your professors on how to get started or go to the Iowa Center for Research for Undergraduates to find an open lab here on campus. That also means as a student, you can get involved in research on the other side and participate in those research studies as well. Not every student conducts research. Some students do choose to study abroad. In a typical year, we send Hawkeyes to over 70 different countries. So you can take your learning elsewhere, learn in a different culture and a different setting, and leave campus for anywhere from two weeks all the way up until one academic year. These are just two examples of experiential learning. There's also opportunities to get involved in volunteering positions, 
internships over the summer, and our honors program also builds experiential learning credits into their program. So there's plenty of opportunities to take advantage of learning outside of the classroom, and I encourage you to consider those experiential learning options when you are looking for the college that's the best fit for you. So not all students will take advantage of studying abroad or doing research, but something that I firmly believe all students can and should get involved with is at least one student organization on campus that they are interested in. We have over 500 student organizations on our campus and they are all very easy to join and run the gamut of anything from Greek life all the way up to student organizations that are just focused on making cookies with your friends on the weekends. So there's plenty of opportunities for you to find something that you are interested in. But if you do not, you can also start your own student organization. It only takes you, four friends, and the signature of a staff or faculty member, and you have a student organization that is registered with the university. We also have a thriving division of performing arts on our campus. So our division of performing arts is dance, theater, and music. So if you participated in any of those things previously, or you've always wanted to, and you want to try being center stage for the first time, you have over 400 opportunities to do so in any given year. And if you are not involved and you don't really want to get involved, that means you have 400 opportunities to support your friends and your campus community in those performances. Typically our performances on campus are anywhere from $0 to $5 for admission. So it's pretty easy to fit in the college students budget, but we also have Hancher Auditorium on our campus where we have things like Broadway productions that come to our campus. Those tickets may be a little bit pricier, but it's an excellent opportunity for the community and the University of Iowa to come together and take part in something in the Division of Performing Arts. We are also a Big Ten institution, and so we love our athletics on campus. There's plenty of options if you want to start a new sport or stay involved in something you are passionate about for you to play club sports or intramural sports. Club sports are competitive typically within the Midwest where you'll compete against other institutions on the weekends and you do have to try out for the team. So you'll have a schedule for practice and a schedule for conditioning. But intramural sports are just for fun. So that's an excellent opportunity for you to compete on campus, maybe meet some new people and take part in a sport that maybe you've never played before or something that you love to play and you just want to introduce your new friends to. I highly encourage every single student to consider opportunities to get involved at all of the schools you are looking at and to get involved once you do get to college because that is going to make the University of Iowa specifically feel a lot more like home and more like a community for you and help you really find a community here on campus. So all of these opportunities that you take advantage of, whether that's an internship or studying abroad or involvement in a student organization or helping out with one of the musicals that takes place on campus, all of those skills and opportunities can be included on a resume or on a cover letter so that you can find your first student job or your first post-graduation job. The Pomerantz Career Center is very helpful when it comes to creating either of these documents or even just helping first year students determine if the major they chose is really what they are passionate about and what they should go into depending on the career field they have in mind. So the Career Center helps you from day one of becoming a Hawkeye all the way up until one year post-graduation. They can help with aptitude testing, they can help build that first resume or brush up your 15th draft of your resume. They also offer career fairs on our campus for everything from student employment all the way to post-graduation employment, which opens you up not only to potentially finding a job, but also networking throughout your time as a student so that by the time you graduate, you have multiple different offers to choose from. They also offer things like mock interviews, interview etiquette tips, and they can help you find things that are not jobs as well. So perhaps you need help finding an internship or you may need to talk to them about going to the volunteer fair as well in order to find some volunteer hours for a program on campus. They also have a website they call Handshake where you can upload the documents that they've helped you create and edit and you can apply for jobs and internships and opportunities 
easily through that website. By far my favorite resource from them is the fact that they have 30 minute appointments with career advisors. So you can sit down and chat with them about any questions that you may have, whether it's your first day on campus or you graduated almost a year ago and you just need a little bit of help navigating applying for a job or a new opportunity. So that in a nutshell is the admissions process and a little bit about what it's like to be a Hawkeye here on campus. So once you move through that admissions process, you are well on the way to becoming a Hawkeye, but there's a couple of things that take place the summer between your senior year and coming to the University of Iowa. As I mentioned, May 3rd of 2021 is our deadline to accept admission this upcoming year. So after you accept admission, we will have you register for a summer orientation. Typically, these are two-day in-person programs on our campus where you will come learn more about our student resources and what it's like to be a Hawkeye and learn all that you need to know about Iowa City and the University of Iowa. And then you will also register for your courses. We will then send you home and bring you back for On Iowa Week, which again is typically an in-person week-long event where we are offering about 150 to 200 daily opportunities for you to get to know your peers and the area as well as the campus a little bit better. It all concludes on Friday night with kickoff at Kinnick, which is the event you see here where you will take a class photo on Kinnick Stadium. And typically we have you make a black eye formation and you will traditionally remember where you are in this black eye as we do take this photo and hang it in our Iowa Memorial Union for the next four years. So that is our steps throughout the next summer portion of the process. I do want to say to everybody, thank you for logging in tonight and for joining us. If you have additional questions, we do have a little bit of time. You can pop those in the Q&A feature and Marissa can answer those on her end. I do also want to encourage all of you that are thinking about applying for the upcoming year to apply early, to let us know how we can help you in any way, whether you are applying this year or preparing to apply for another year. And I also always encourage you to check out our social media channels. We share plenty of information about what it's like to be a student at Iowa, which is pretty increasingly important in this virtual day and age so that you can get more information about who we are as an institution to see if you can see yourself here. That is all I have for you tonight. Again, please feel free to connect with us either in the Q&A feature or on our website. Um, and as always, go Hawks. Thank you very much, Jess. We appreciate your, your time this evening. And thank you, students. Again, if you have questions, you can put them into the Q&A. And Marissa and Jess are more than happy to get back with you. As you exit the webinar tonight, you will have a brief four-question survey. We would really appreciate your feedback. And in about a week, this session, as well as many others, will be available at moacac.org. And again, if you'd like to sign up for more sessions this week, week or next, you can also go to moacac.org. Thank you for joining us tonight and go Hawkeyes!